The views and opinions expressed in this program are not necessarily those of its host, Urban Arts Enterprises, its advertisers, affiliates, and are those of the speakers and do not necessarily reflect the views or positions of any entities they represent. All right, ladies and gentlemen, y'all know what time it is. It's your boy, Brian Forbes. We are live on Inside Stepping. Back for 2024, let me first say to everyone, Happy New Year. We are happy to have you back with us doing what we do. And this year is promising to be another big year for Inside Stepping, and we are absolutely going to bring you the best possible, um, uh, uh, the best, the, the most information, we're going to provide you with all the things you need to know stepping related. And I want y'all to remember something. Inside Stepping is the show that is dedicated strictly to steppers. Strictly to stepping and what steppers care about. We ain't doing all the other stuff. We ain't jumping around, uh, uh, you know, talking about all the other different genres of dance. This is about, this is Inside Stepping. That's it. That's all. Uh, Super, uh, Super Dave, Dave in the in building, the Sweet Carolyn. Carolyn. Happy, Happy New Year to y'all. I appreciate, appreciate you. Thank you for coming you through. Um, <clears throat> y'all, I'm going to be having my glasses, glasses on through this show because we got a whole lot to talk about. Uh, and I just want every, I want all y'all. Look, Happy New Year. Kenneth Wynn, I see you. Joyce Taylor in the building. Chris Stanton in the house. Darlene Manns, that's my girlfriend. Hey, Darlene. Uh, and we're going to do the damn thing tonight, y'all. See Wands. Okay, listen. <clears throat> right off the bat. Tonight's, Tonight's show, show is, is one, one you are, you are not, not gonna, gonna want to miss for fact. more than more a couple than of reasons. reasons. One, one, first, I'm a, first, first, we, first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go over this weekend's, weekend's events. events. Bruce, Bruce Dyer, Dyer in the building. What's happening, happening, my man? Arjunel Anderson. Anderson. We're gonna, we're gonna go, go over the events, events from this weekend over in Clark's Vegas, Tennessee. We had a fantastic time with Josiah and Tanya Bird over there. But tonight's show, y'all. We're going to talk, talk about, about security, security, personal, personal safety, safety, health and wellness, and wellness on the, on the step of set. set. Now, now this, this is an extremely, extremely important, important topic, topic, and I think and this, I think is, this a, is a, a very, very apropos, apropos for opening up, up this year's uh, uh, shows. Because this, this is information, information y'all need. need. Trust, Trust me when I tell you this. You're going to want to tune in. You're going to want to tag people in this one. You're going to want to share this live. Don't forget to subscribe. to subscribe hit that youtube, YouTube. Go, over go over to youtube, YouTube. hit that subscribe, that subscribe button if y'all want to all of y'all that's sitting there with your cell phones, phones in your hands you go over to youtube, YouTube and you can watch this on your television, television. it's live it's and live in color, color and you can do the damn, damn thing over there, over there. Um, um i encourage, I encourage everybody, everybody what what okay, okay. Thank, thank you i encourage everybody to do that um for those reasons because we want to make sure that you know you get an opportunity to uh watch this show in the comfort of your own home, on your living room couch. The right of lady, too. Uh, C4L, I see you. Janet Wooten in the building. Y'all coming on through. Hey, Val. Val Wells is in the house. That's my, that's my number one fan right there. Reggie Miles, what's happening, Professor? Okay. Right quick, y'all. The first thing we're going to do, we're going to recap this weekend's events right quick with the facilitators of those events. Uh, my main man, 50 Grand. And the and host, host and his, and hostess, his hostess with the mostest, mostest y'all. And, and for those of you who don't, don't know, know, this is Josiah and, and Tanya, Tanya Burke. Burke, ladies, ladies and gentlemen. gentlemen. How y'all doing, doing this, this evening? evening? Don't be looking. Pull up for a minute, man. Huh? <laughs> What'd you, What'd say? you say? I need to cut my Wi Fi on. You, you look you good over here, man. What's the problem? We ain't having we ain't no problems problem. over here. Okay. Okay, we're cool. As long as you ain't having no problems, we ain't having no problems. There you go. There you go. Okay, okay, so, so um, with that, that said, said uh, first let me say thank the two of you for having such a strong, um, just powerful event this weekend, man. I got to tell you right off the rip, 
I had a fantastic time. It was bananas. And I know, um, man, y'all, y'all, y'all did the thing, man. You put in the work. Uh, and, and I want to hear this from Tanya. Hey, Tanya. <laughs> That's my shy buddy over there. Huh? We're not having no problems over here. You appreciate all of the people who came to your event because I know that we, as a matter of fact, I was actually uh, uh, loving the fact that we had people in from everywhere. I think people came from Chicago. We had people all the way from uh, well, all of the southern states that butt up to y'all. Um, I loved the amount of 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 people who show, like like the mix the mix of people. Now, did you do that? Did, were you able to put that together? Is that a relationship thing, or how did y'all how did y'all manage that? It's relationship thing, going out and you know having the other group and stuff like that. Yeah, other cities and towns and stuff. Mostly a relationship thing. Well, y'all got some good relationships because uh, I thoroughly enjoyed. Um, let me see. They're, They're saying, saying we got, we got a, little a little bit of an, of an echo, echo issue, issue here. here. If y'all, uh, for my audience out there, if y'all uh, having any, if you're having, if we're having any um, uh, issues in that regard, please let us know. Let me see. Let me fix something. Okay, we're working on it. They get it together. Okay. Uh, so, um, I mean, you know, tell us, give us some background on, on your event, because I ain't going to lie to y'all. I, I had, I had, man, I had such a good time. There you go. I want you to talk a little bit. Mm -hmm. I talk a Look, lot. Look, Tanya, she, she trying to avoid me over there. I, I, that's what I'm trying to get. I'm, <laughs> I know what she's doing. <laughs> Come on, Tanya, talk to me. First is New Year's Eve, and my husband like, nobody ain't coming to celebrate your anniversary. And I'm like, okay. So we just thought we'd put a party together and just celebrate that way. Okay, okay so, so off the top, off the top okay, okay, so for my audience, audience because Tanya, Tanya, you know, she, she like she's like, very shy, y'all. So, so I'm, I'm going to get, listen, listen, first of all, let me all tell, tell, tell y'all this. this. This is, is Tanya, Tanya and Joe's, Joe's was, anniversary was anniversary as well as, as their, their event. event. Let me see. I'm working on, I'm working on something else, y'all. So Joe, you, 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 you gave us a hard time, man, because you know you said, I don't really want to do it. I don't want to do it. Man, listen, y'all did a hell of an event, man. I had a really good time, bro. Real talk. Um, so what's up, man? We can look forward to another one? First of all, let me say it like this first. I'm going to put him on the spot, so let me, let me be a politician with all of this. The facility that we had, we can't get it anymore doing the Christmas season because they're going to let their people off. They're not allowing them to work. They're going to let them take their vacation. That place has a certain ambiance with all the lights and the windows and the panoramic view. That kind of set the stage for things. To keep doing it, it's going to be somewhere else and it's not going to be the same. Got, Got you. you. Well, well, that, that I, 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 can't I can't argue, argue with, with that, that, man. The, the energy, energy in the room was great. Was great. I, I, I thoroughly enjoyed, enjoyed um, um, I mean, I, mean, I, enjoyed, I enjoyed the whole, whole thing, thing, man. I, it was a well-put-together well put together event. event. You, know, you know, I go, I go to, a to a lot of events, events man, and, and, and I, 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 I'm, I've, grown I've grown to love um, when, when we come, come to these, these types type of events, events and, 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 and I've constantly, I've constantly stress, stress this with everybody throughout, throughout the entire, entire Steppers community, community that, that relationships are so very important. And I happen to know that the majority of the people who were there are people that y'all, that are more or less dear to y'all, and... I think, I think that, that was, was very important. important. Not, Not only the fact, fact that it was y'all's anniversary, anniversary, but, but the, the fact, fact that, that we, were we were able to share in a New, a New Year's, Year's Eve event with people that we that actually we like and care about. about. That's, 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 that's a beautiful, beautiful thing, thing, man, to be able to, be able to do, do on the, on the, on the stepper, stepper scene. scene. I, 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 I think personally, personally, you know. I don't know, man. You know. So I'm going to say this. Moving, Moving forward, forward and, I, and I already, and I, already I, know I know I asked you the question, question about, about next year, year but, but I, also I also happen to already know, know that, that 
anybody that does an event next year is going to struggle because of the dates. A lot of people have not thought about this, but and I'm telling my audience this for future reference. Y'all need to know one thing that. In the, in future, the future, oh, well, oh uh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Next, next year, year New, New Year's falls, falls on a Monday. On a Monday. Monday. And because, yeah, because Eve, huh? New Year's Eve is on a Monday. Yeah. yeah. New Year's New Eve, Eve is, is on a Monday. Monday. And, because and because New Year's, New Year's Eve is on a Monday, Monday it's going to be difficult, difficult for, anybody for anybody to give a weekend, weekend event because Monday is not a holiday. So people are going to have to work. And that's going to be interesting within itself. So, yeah. so for my for audience, audience, just so, just y'all, so y'all know, uh, we, are we are working, working on, the on the echo, so just hold tight. Hold tight. Y'all, y'all just, just bear, bear with me. With I don't me. even know why, 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 why that started, started or where it where came, came from, from, but we're going to get it worked out. That's why we need to do the event, man, because, you know, Monday is not a holiday. Go ahead, Joe. I'm listening. I, Monday's not a holiday, so, you know, it's going to be hard when people got to work uh, uh, on that 31st, which is a Monday. And it's not gonna matter where people are in the country. I mean, like really, literally all over the country, people are gonna they're gonna that's gonna be a struggle. Yeah. yeah. Huh. Okay. Might have to skip a year. I don't know. Is <laughs> <laughs> that smooth? I threw that in there. Uh huh. I see you. <laughs> okay, but look here. Since we talking about you it, look it, here. Let me, okay. Thank you. Let me let me say let me say a few things, man. Let me, let me send out some shout outs, man, because of the good party. First, uh, Happy New Year's from me and the spouse over here, me and the wife. Okay. Girlfriend. Sexy girlfriend. That's your girlfriend, man. Let me, That's your side piece over there. Happy New Year. <laughs> huh? That's your main piece, side piece. <laughs> yeah, that's my side piece, man. She's on my side. Basket of chicken and all of that. <laughs> man, all of that. All of that. Hey, but look here. I want to thank everybody that came out. Hey, look, because there was a lot of uh, New Year's Eve parties going on across the country. Yeah, it was. And I've always told people, man, look, go where you're comfortable at. Go where you can get to. If if you can come hang with us and you in the South, whatever, come on hang with us. If not, go where you want to go, man. Just as long as you're having a good time where you at. That's the main thing. That's what matters. Uh, I, I like to start off, first of all, thanking all the people here in Clarksville. Mm-hmm. Uh, man, y'all had a great y'all y'all's people in Clarksville, man. I was impressed. They they put in work. So I, I need I need the wife to, to help me out on this one. We got three Vanessas. We got a B Dub, we got a Vanessa, and we got a Van. Mm-hmm. So I want to thank them. Van was at the at the front door doing her thing. Everybody working did what they supposed to do. Lashana was there handling her business. Greg and Brenda. Uh, we had a. Uh, 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 Ju- Julian, Crystal, uh, uh, Glenn, mm-hmm. uh, Yolanda. That's why I stopped trying to think of Yolanda, CC, and Mary. I think that's about it right there. I think I think we got everybody in the group. If we miss you, oh oh, Joanna, Joanna, gotta get Joanna. Uh, uh, yeah, okay, that's the group right there. I'm done with. I'm, <laughs> yeah, make sure you don't get nobody now. <laughs> yeah, that's what I was trying to do. <laughs> Hey, charge it to my head. Charge to your head, not to your heart. Hey, look, don't charge my head or my heart. Just don't charge me. I'm getting old. I can't think of it. <laughs> <laughs> then there's that. Hey, look. And then second, I want to thank my uh, I want to thank my DJs. I had DJ Pony Mac. <laughs> you got that it. That fellow right there. Pony Mac and, tore and it up. I, I had DJ Be Real. Y'all heard that dude was all right. <laughs> yeah, and then I had Brian Forbes at Inside Stepping. Yeah, yeah. So I like to thank all them guys. Then I like to thank my uh, my workshop people, Miss Lenore, mm-hmm. and then uh, uh, Greg Dixon uh, with the with, with the walking. Right. A lot of uh, a lot of different cities showed up. <clears throat> oh, I, I'm gonna have to give him a shout out because if I don't give him a shout out, and you with me, you know me and him going me and, me and him gonna get into it. Or he gonna get mad at me. You know what I'm talking about, right, Kurt? Oh, absolutely, Kurt. That look, <laughs> I, I told Kurt. Hey, bro- I said, "Don't you call me yeah. a week from now, talking about you ain't like that shit I did." I said, "I'm telling you now, you better get it out your system, because <laughs> you know he'll think of something to get mad at you about." Let me let me let me, let me thank the drop for, for dropping in on us and having a good time with him. Absolutely. Man, I appreciate that. Man, out from yeah. Chicago, it was cool. He brought a couple of people with him. Uh-huh. Uh huh. Mississippi, 
Tennessee, all the Tennessee, Nashville, showed Memphis. Showed up and uh, showed out. Uh, uh, Huntsville, mm -hmm. uh, Birmingham, Alabama. Hunt, yeah, Huntsville, Alabama, Birmingham, Alabama. Uh, St. Louis. People, I, look, I can't name every, every city and state. No, but they, they showed up. They showed up and they showed out, man. We had people from a little bit everywhere. And I like I said, I it was a it was an excellent mix. Um I'm hanging out with us. Yeah. We I, I Texas, a, I got to say Texas. Us Texas. Yeah, Texas. Uh, Dallas, Houston, and San Antonio was in the building. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yeah, they were absolutely I, I got to them. You know what I mean? And like I say, it wasn't no somebody from Montgomery like, said they was there. <laughs> Hey, hey, Montgomery, we appreciate you. Uh -huh. Hey, if, hey, I'm gonna say it like this: is, since y'all on the Brian, so if I didn't mention you, say something to Brian, and and, and, and I'll miss you. I ain't trying to miss nobody. Just trying to make sure everybody's there. Well, we we, and, we, and, we did a lot this weekend. We got a lot done, and I'll be honest with you, Joe. I'm a little surprised. You know, um, I'm not even tired. You know, I would I was, you know, we drove in 15 hours. Uh, we got there, set up, did the damn thing, DJed all three days. Me and Pony Mac. And we got in the car last night, uh, yesterday. We drove back. We got in early this morning, about four, uh, four thirty-five o'clock this morning. And man, I'm I'm not even I'm not even burnt like I would be. And I mean, after all of that, I mean, we had a yeah. good time, man. It was it was just it was good all the way around the board. I seen I seen stuff on Facebook. Uh, I'm gonna say this real quick. I seen stuff on Facebook. They had something going on in Houston, mm -hmm. and uh, then Chicago had their New Year's Eve yeah. party, man. Everybody getting their junk on. I seen a video with uh Sean Ballantyne over there breaking it down. I ain't talking about the content. I'm just, I'm just talking about just him dancing. Yeah, they had somebody um, called him. The, the ISDC was in Houston this weekend, and then you had uh, All Girl Productions did their thing, the masquerade ball up in Dallas, and then Pete right. had his thing yeah. out in, up in Chicago, and then of course you had yours yeah. over there in Clarksville, man. And, and all of right. them seemed to like, you know, look like everybody had a good time all the way yeah. across the board. Good. Yeah, that's yeah, everybody thing. had a good time. But I, so I like that. But like I say, you know, it was. It was it was kind of strange doing like you said doing a New Year's Eve mm -hmm. party when New Year's Eve fell on Sunday. Yeah, yeah, it was a little different. You know I mean? So and then you know because people like to come in early because like last year when we did it New Year's Eve was on a Saturday. Right. So people came in on a Friday, so it was easy to go ahead and set that up. But by being on a Sunday, it it, it changes the the dynamics of doing everything. You got to change things around. You can't you can't do it. Like you did it, like it was on a Saturday. We got Janet Wooten from out of Columbus, Georgia, was in the house. She just chimed in. Okay. Thank you, there, Miss Janet. Yes. So yeah, Appreciate man. You for coming um, well, with us. under normal circumstances, I would say fantastic event. Can't wait till next year, but I already know that next year is probably not going to be a thing logistically and realistically. Now, unless y'all going to do something locally, but. Um, I think a lot of people are going to struggle next year with New Year's Eve anywhere as far as, like, you know, out-of-town events goes. Um, yeah, that's just man, my you know, opinion. That, I don't really know, but either way. Yeah, because some people ain't, like you said, some people ain't going to be able to get off. Yeah, exactly. And that's going to definitely be a, that's going to be a wild card. We'll see how that play out. So, Miss Tanya. But you know. Uh, oh, and I let me give a shout out to your artist, man, that, that did the painting for you of you and Tanya yeah, I, for the I, anniversary. I, yeah, come on in, come on, come on. Okay, look here. I want to thank. Uh, 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 well, first I'm gonna thank O, because O went to. Uh, uh, That's William Red. Owens. For those of you who don't know, William and yeah. Riri Owens. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, we, William and Riri Owens. They went to uh, uh, my boy Greg and had him to do the picture, and they surprised. Well, they surprised the wife with it. Mm -hmm. She was she was <laughs> boohooing and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, cause you took off on us. <laughs> I stepped out. He stepped out. He had to go go yeah, change clothes. So she got the so she got the everything was good. Uh, we had a few parts. We had a play. I like to thank uh, uh Love Bistro because people people Man. Kind of their place. Yes, Love Bistro in Clarksville, uh, Clarksville, Tennessee. They did the thing. They set it out for us. Very nice place. Oh yeah, and the producer lady says, and by the way, that connection came through inside stepping. <laughs> I, look, I was definitely, I was definitely say the producer, tell the producer lady, what am I missing? That there it is. Uh, he, he, yeah. Oh, you're missing Catania and Josiah Burke come to San Antonio and teach a class. <laughs> 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 and, and, and the producer lady on her game, man. Always, always, always on her square. 
Well, listen, yeah. uh, Miss Tanya, go on and take yeah. us out and tell us what you got to say. Give us your last words so we can move on with the rest of the show. Tell me something good. We just make 2024 great. You know, be kind, respectful, you know, no boundaries, and just have a good heart. I'm going to hold you to that, Tanya. That no boundaries part. I'm going to hold you yes. to that. You ready? Okay. You ready? Uh huh. We're going to do this yes. in 2024. You ready, right? Okay. I got a public statement from you. Okay, we doing it. <laughs> <laughs> it's going down. Y'all get ready for the birds. It's about to go. It's about to hey, go down. What's she doing in 2024? Huh? What's she doing in 2024? She coming on. She about to. She about to. She about to get behind this machine, Jack. We finna push. Okay, well we okay. pushing as a good, team. Good. Ain't that right, Tanya? Yep. Okay. <laughs> she, she said, yep. Hey, let's, hey, let's get it in. Yep. My let's man. get it in. All right. Well, listen. We ain't gonna hold you. You got other stuff you gotta do. Cause you gonna. Hey, cause you finna mention a subject that's really important to everybody across the country. Uh, concerning these events and people dealing with different things in their life. Absolutely. That is absolutely so look here. correct. Last thing I say is, man, again, Happy New Year to everybody. Appreciate everybody who came out and had fun with us. I thank you from the bottom of my heart, man. God bless y'all. Enjoy 2024. Y'all keep it 100, and we'll talk to you later. Peace out, my brother. Y'all take care. Love you. Well, and happy new year. <laughs> Hit both of them. She got a winner. All right, buddy. <laughs> Peace, man. All right, man. Holla. All right, ladies and gentlemen. Josiah and Tanya Burt. Um, fantastic event. Happy anniversary to them. And we had a really good time. Now, let's get down to the meat and potatoes, y'all. It's time to get down and once again inside Stepping. The show that's dedicated strictly to Steppers and what Steppers care about. So now, tonight, y'all, we get ready to talk about Security, safety, and health in the Steppers community. Now, a couple of things had come up in recent uh, months and even uh, as recent as this weekend where I felt like this is a topic that absolutely must be discussed and absolutely must be dealt with and Everybody, I don't care who you are, you're going to get something from this conversation. Trust me when I tell you that because I got some tips, some hacks, some tricks, some things that's going to be beneficial to you moving forward in this community. For those of you who are not aware of certain things, I'm about to make you aware of them. So I want to start out by saying that, and oh, and by the way, if you have any questions or commentary, please, please participate by putting it in the feed. Let me say Happy New Year to those of you who are just tuning in. Thank you so much, y'all. It is a new year. It's 2024. We're about to get it in. We're going to keep bringing y'all this good information, and we're going to make your step and journey that much sweeter by doing what we do. Now, peep game, right? I want to start with security. Now, because we're going to get into a lot of other stuff that, trust me, you, you need to hear this. This show is probably going to run a little long tonight because I got a lot of information to impart, and you want to hear this stuff. You want to hear this. Now, let's start with, I want, I want you all to remember something, especially my traveling steppers. When we go to these different cities, let's be aware. Let's be mindful of where we're going. Um, all places are not the same, although you should handle your security the same no matter where you go because you just don't know. Sometimes, you know, I, I, even I'm guilty of letting my guard down in places where, you know, we really shouldn't. But we know that certain cities are maybe a little rougher than others. And, you know, maybe some things go on um, in certain cities that might not go on in other cities. So, but we know crime is everywhere, number one. And our safety is imperative. If you think about it, we leave our homes and we pack our clothes, we pack our things, and we get on these planes these trains and these automobiles and we go across the country to enjoy this dance and fellowship with the people around us in this community. But we have to be mindful in doing so that there are precautions and things that we need to be mindful of to take care of ourselves and those around us. Now, we can't take anything for granted. Now, the first thing I want to say for those people, let's say, for example, we drive. Now, before we ever get in a car, before we ever get on a plane, something I want y'all to think about, and we're going we're gonna to cover this even further later on down in the show, but 
when we pack, when you pack your stuff to get ready to go to an event, right? Please think about what you're putting in your bags. Don't carry unnecessarily valuable items with you to events. You're going to be staying in hotels. You're going to be um, um, in, in, I mean, let's just keep it 100, even though we're all a good dance family. And usually I've never run across an instance where somebody has had a problem with, say, a purse getting stolen or anything like that. But let's still not let our guard down. Don't carry things that you don't necessarily need to carry. Let's say, for example, you know, you got some nice jewelry. And this particular night, you're going to wear that diamond ring, but you may not wear that diamond ring the next night. Well, you got to think about what are you going to do with that diamond ring while you're at the set? You know, things like that. Be smart. Use your head when you're packing and getting yourself ready to go. Now, if you're renting a car, people who rent cars, right? When you get to these events, we're often in hotels um, and, and at events and different venues and different things like that. And it depends on what events you go to because some of them are not all centrally located in one location. Don't leave things in your car that are uh, visible. Don't set yourself up for failure. Black Knight says they will steal from a church. Absolutely. Don't leave your things where they are easily accessible or visible from the outside where somebody just busts your window, takes something stupid like a phone charger. There are cities uh, that will steal the simplest things just because. Don't cost them nothing to bust your window and take it. And it don't even cost you nothing because it was nothing very valuable in the first place. But just don't leave it where it's easily uh, accessible and visible for people to take from you. Don't make yourself an easy target. Now, uh, when you're in the hotels, right? And I, I do this. When you're in a hotel, you got your items, your, your luggage and all that kind of stuff in a hotel. And you might have a valuable item or something that, you know, doesn't need to be, you don't need to leave it out. Hide those things deep into your luggage and lock it. Lock your bag. Put that stuff away. Lock it. Now, the reason I'm saying this is because let's just use the example, you know, of housekeeping. Now, me personally, my wife and I, we don't let people in our hotel room knowingly while we're anywhere. I always put the do not disturb sign on my door and it stays there for my entire visit. I don't want nobody lurking around in my hotel room, period, 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 period. Don't come in there. I clean up behind myself. I'll make my bed. I will, we will take our trash, bag it up, set it in the hallway. If I need towels, I'll go down to the desk and get them or I'll send some, my wife, one of us is going to go get the towels, but we're not allowing people inside of the hotel room. You got something? Remember we let our down? I'm not, I'm, I'm going to get all that. I got it. Um, so, you know, that, those are just a couple of things. I don't believe in letting them in my room. That's just me. Now, either you don't care or, you know, and they are, don't get me wrong. If you're a person who, and, it, and let's say, for example, I'm traveling and I don't have a bunch of unnecessary stuff. Well, you know, I, I just, I'm funny about my space. I don't need you in my space while I'm in a hotel room. It's just not necessary. Don't come in here. Now, keep in mind, and, I'm, and now I'm speaking to my promoters. Promoters, please be careful. When you book these events, when you are setting up a set, be mindful of the hotel that you're setting your event up in. People, when you go to attend these events, pay attention to where these hotels are, what neighborhoods they're in, uh, is there homeless hanging out? next to uh, uh, the hotel, in front of the hotel. You know, is this a high crime area? They got little apps you can use. You can just check and see if, you know, it's a whole bunch of folks hanging around. Um, be mindful, promoters, of where you're having your event because you have people that are traveling there. And Yeah, uh, yeah uh, Uzi Mackie says, uh, read the Yelp reviews. Absolutely, 100% I agree. Um, there was a, uh, an event not long ago 
a couple of years ago where the hotel was sketchy, questionable. Um, I got several phone calls about it. Apparently, the event came off without a hitch, as far as I know. So that's not a bad thing, but it definitely was some. It, it raised a few eyebrows. That's just something to pay attention to, as a consumer of this dance and of this community. You want to be mindful of where you're traveling to, uh, and what you will be met with when you get there, because you know y'all know like I do. Some of these brochures and uh, these different things uh, can be a little bit uh, uh, misleading, if you will. <laughs> Uh, Tori Jones, I see you. Regina Freeman, uh, Sharice Wright, Dallas Brown in the house. Tanya McKenzie, what's happening? Uh, Brian Pollard, I got, um, let's see, we got, we got a bunch of folks in. Um, and listen, if I missed you, charge it to my head and not to my heart because I love you anyway. Trust me, I do. I gotta, I'm looking at whatever's on my screen at any given time, so that's what's happening. Um, now, let me give y'all right quick uh, some tips. All right, and I'm and I'm specifically, and don't get it twisted. I am a security nut. You dig? Uh, smiling happily as a solo traveler, she brings her own locks for inside the room. She's covering what she might think might be cameras. She brings her own towel, soap, sage, peppermint spray. Absolutely, and I'm gonna get to that smiling happily. Bear with me. So check this out. I want to tell y'all, and when we talk about how these things happen in some of these hotels. My wife and I were staying. Now, we're from Chicago. That's home. We were staying at the London House on Michigan Avenue, Michigan and Wacker Drive, uh, one weekend. Uh, we had had a, I don't remember what was going on, but our children decided that we needed a getaway. So my daughters booked us a room at the London House, and we were staying there. Now, we left the room to go somewhere. We came back, and our things were gone. And... Needless to say, I hit the proverbial ceiling. So later on that day, as I moved back toward my part of the city, I got a phone call from somebody. And he said, hey, man, and it just happened to be someone that I knew very well for many, many, many years. He called me and he said, hey, man, well, what, what, what started it was I made a Facebook post and I talked about what had just happened. And I got a phone call and he goes, hey, man, uh, was that you down there at the London house that that happened to? He said, look, man, let me call you back in about 30 minutes. He called me back. He had all my stuff. And he said, yeah, uh, I ain't sure what happened, but uh, it'll be at the front desk when you get there. The point was, I don't know what kind of inside scam, whatever was going on down there. But fortunately, because of my relationships with people and me knowing who I know and people knowing the type of smoke I can cause, <laughs> my things were returned. It pissed me off. Yes, it did. Uh, but I'm saying that to say you just don't know. You don't know. Take precautions to make sure that you don't set yourself up for failure. Now, let me tell y'all this right here. I'm going to give you, I'm going to show you something right quick. A towel can save your life. A towel. Here's what I mean. If you, once you're inside your room, y'all know that every hotel room has the deadbolt, the handle, and they usually have some sort of a locking mechanism at the top, like one of those little slide deals where the little ball goes in and then it slides back so that the door can't open all the way if somebody tried to come in. Okay, cool, right? Then they have the ones that flip out so that the door stops behind it. Well, I'm going to show you all something. When you, Once you get inside your room, you have three options in that case. And I'm showing you how to secure your door now. I want you to understand how to secure your door so that even if a person from the outside has a master key, one of those, you know, another one of them, they open up your door, they can actually move each one of those. There's a way to move those things out of the way so that they can open the door. But I'm getting ready to show you how to stop that. Y'all see that? That is a hotel hand towel. You're going to take that towel, double it over, 
you're going to take it and you're going to roll it up just like this, right? You finish rolling this towel up, and I'm specifically, I'm, I'm, I'm doing this because, ladies, some of y'all travel alone, and you're in those rooms, and you by yourself. You don't necessarily have anybody on deck if something should happen. So what you don't want is to be in a situation where you have to be concerned, right? You take that towel that's rolled up just like that. Where the door handle goes down, where it flips down like this, you're going to slide that towel in between the door handle and the door, right? And here's why. They have a tool that they can slide underneath the door, and, it, and then they flip it up, and it can grab the door handle and pull down on the door handle. Now, if you know, when you push that door handle down, that deadbolt automatically comes unlocked. That's the law in most places. Uh, in, well, not most places, everywhere. That door, that door handle, once it comes down, that deadbolt comes off and that door will open from the outside. If you put that towel in between that latch and that door, that apparatus cannot grab that door handle and pull it down and open it. Now, on the same note, you can take that towel, right? And if you, and you, you should use really a washcloth. You take, you know, y'all know the ones that, sl the, the, where you put the, 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 it's got the little ball on there and then it's got the slide where you put it across the door. So when you open the door, it'll just stop. Okay. Well, you're going to take that towel, a hand towel, and you're going to take it and you're going to run it in between the little slot like this so that even if that door was to open, that thing is not going to slide. Therefore, they can't stick a piece of wire in or a rubber band and pull it back so that the door pops open. This stops that. Remember that. Now, the other thing is, if you're in a hotel and they have those automatic clo door closers at the top up there, you know, the little V elbow, the little V elbow thing that's at the top of the door, so when the door opens, it does this. If you take a belt or a strap, like for example, a um, uh, um, a uh, strap from your suitcase, one of your carry straps, a belt or anything, and you just wrap it around that, wrap it around that, that arm so that it can't open, that door will not open. Pull it tight, tie it tight, and you don't have to worry about nobody coming through that door. Even if they do, you give yourself time so that you don't get set up for failure. Now, also, Another smart move, take, sometimes in some of the hotels, they have glasses in there. If you take two or three glasses, you can stack them up right in front of the door, or you can take the ironing board and just lean it up against the door. That way, if the door moves or anybody tries to fool around with the door, you're going to know that they're trying to make entry or something is going on. These are just little tips to help to keep you safe in the game. Now, another thing is them damn peepholes, okay? Some of these hotels, peepholes don't have covers over them. Now, I want you to know a person literally can walk, can look in that peephole and see you. They can put a camera up there that they can look through your room. Take When you first get in the hotel room, step into the bathroom area or wherever, there's usually a box of tissue. Grab you one little tissue and just... Twist it up and jam it in the hole. That way nobody can be looking in your room or anything like that. Okay? You want to do that. Uh, thank you, Erica Nicole. She said, here's a video on how to use a towel for extra security in hotel rooms. Thank you for that. She just put a YouTube video up. And I am going to encourage you all to all take the time to go on to YouTube and check these things out. There are plenty of videos on hotel security. Um, Wanda Scale says she uses her hanger around the pump arm. There you go, Wanda. Thank you. Uh, that is another one. But that one it tends sometimes to be a little more complicated. But, yes, that's absolutely another good one. Thank you. Um, now, here's the other thing. And we've been hearing about this from um, in recent years, months, years, about the Airbnbs and cameras. Okay, 
hidden cameras. Now, your cell, most people's cell phones today, we, everybody has pretty much um, newer cell phones, okay? If you, want, if you want to check just to see if your cell phone will pick up infrared, you can take a remote control and point it at the phone and it, you'll be able to see it. You can't see the infrared, but the camera on your phone can. So here's what you want to do. You're going to point it at your, now remember, you're going to use the front facing camera, which means the one that like if you're doing a selfie, that's the camera you want to use. Okay. Not the one in front, but the one that faces you. Now you're going to take your phone, turn off all the, once you know that it does infrared, which like I said, most of the newer, newer ones do, you're not going to have that problem. Turn that phone. Like you can have it like it's facing you, but have it over your head so you can scan the room. You're going to be scanning behind you. Look for any type of a red dot, any type of flashing red light. That's a camera. Pay very close attention. Scan the room. Look, look where the smoke detector is. Look where lamps, phone receivers. Um, I heard of one where the blow dryer, uh, uh, where, the, where the blow dryer hangs up. Uh, be careful. Just pay attention. Watch your room. Now, if you want to take it one step further, I know people who literally go to hotels and they bring their own sheets, pillowcases, and other things, towels, and things like that. But we also know that, you know, traveling with a lot of this stuff sometimes can be a little bit hectic. I do recall once my wife and I were at the Luxor in Vegas. And when we got in the room, the first thing I did was to pull the cover, the sheets back. I always do this in hotel rooms. I pull the sheets back and I check things. I just look, just visually look. But there was a bunch of hair clippings on the bed like somebody had just got their hair cut. Uh, and right quick, Wanda Scales, thank you. She also said, make sure you check the vents when you do your infrared check. Absolutely, thank you. So we were, we get in the room and I, and I find these hair clippings on the bed well, y'all know, of course, I, I went ham, went downstairs and, you know, lost my mind. And they comped us for the rest of the weekend. Um, <laughs> I mean, when I say they comped us, they comped us well. But the point is that we don't know what these housekeepers are doing. We don't know what they're on. The other thing is, and when it comes back, like going back to the camera situation, it doesn't necessarily have to be the hotel that does this. There might have been a person in that room before you who set that room up so that the next tenant would be getting viewed on a camera. And we got the technology these days is so crazy that you really do have to be careful. Cameras are literally everywhere now. And people have access to this stuff. It's not like they have to jump through hoops to get it. It's all out there. It's available to everybody. So you got to be sure you got to check what you're doing, make sure. And don't get me wrong, if you know you're in your room, you don't care somebody watching you sleep, then uh, well, whatever. But you know, some folks got their own proclivities and the rest of the world don't even know nothing about that. So you don't want to be on camera, you dig. Now, um, once you've you know done all of that type of thing. So anyway, with, 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 where the other thing is concerned with all of the uh, uh, hotel uh, cleanliness, sometimes these housekeepers do what they're supposed to do. Sometimes they don't. But it's up to you to make that, ch to, to check it. Okay, yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, I remember that. Okay, see, that's she's reminded me of some other instances that we had, some situations. Um, uh, Bima Johnson says she carries Lysol spray, and she sprays down the bed and all surfaces. And that's a great idea as well, Bima, because here's the other thing. People get, I mean, especially right now, people are walking around with COVID. They got colds. Uh, flu is going on real bad. As a matter of fact, I heard they just put a mandate back in place in Chicago where people are starting to have to wear masks again. You don't know who was in the room before you. We don't know how well the, the housekeeping cleaned the room. So it's best to have a can of Lysol available. Absolutely. If you don't do nothing but by the time you land, uh, uh, grab you a small can of Lysol from local Walmart or gas station or whatever, when you hit the room, psst, Cause I'm just saying everybody ain't driving. So in case you, you know, you can't fly with stuff. So if you get somewhere, you get you some and you hit that thing. Um, so now another 
thing. You can also purchase. Now you can go check these out on Amazon because you can buy a piece of equipment, a small apparatus that will allow you to check for, for these cameras. But you also can get yourself an infrared, I mean a, uh, a, a ultraviolet light. Now what do you want ultraviolet light for? Because what you want to do is walk around the room or even pull back the sheets, turn off the lights. And don't forget, for both of these tests, with the, with the cameras as well as the cleanliness, you're going to turn off the lights. You take that ultraviolet light and you shine it over the bed. You shine it over all of the surfaces, floor, different places around the room, just to see if there's been any bodily fluids in places that you don't want. Now, as we all know, it's a hotel that's going to happen. However, when it comes to the bed itself, if things are not up to par, then you need to be on that phone with that front desk. You better check the phone first, too. Be on the phone with that front desk. Hey, look, I'm going to need you to uh, come handle that. Uh, Tina Baker said, check the balcony doors even on the second floor. This is how I got robbed in the Bahamas. I was going to get to that, Tina Baker. Thank you, and I'm glad you brought it up. When you go into these hotel rooms, check to make sure if you have a sliding door, if you have balcony doors of any kind, if you have any windows of any kind, make sure that they are locked. If they do not lock, you need to be on that front desk. You need to make sure that you have your place secured, period, period, period. Your safety and your security is ultimately the most important thing. Um, and again, don't forget, when you use either one of these, you're going to turn off those lights and you're going to check all of these things. You know, it's a shame that we have to do this, but I mean, hey, an ounce of prevention, you know. That's always important. Uh, let's see. Oh, and don't forget, y'all, and, and everything that I'm talking about, a lot of this stuff you can grab. You can grab this stuff on Amazon, some of it. So uh, do that. Now, most of the hotel rooms these days have safes in them. Well, they're better than, I, I don't use them personally, but they're better than leaving your stuff laying out on a dresser or whatever the case may be. So you want to make sure that you don't leave things in plain sight for people to just don't make your don't deliberately make yourself a victim. Um, use the safe, but you know, be mindful. Um, also, dang on it. I just thought about something. <laughs> anyway, steppers think about this. When we go to these sets, we generally are out of our rooms the majority of the time that we're there, right? We are at a day set. Some folks go shopping. They go see other events. Um, and then, of course, at night, we're usually dancing. Well, most, I ain't going to say most, but a lot of hotel goers are not necessarily gone at night. When you leave your room, leave your TV on. Maybe even leave a light on. But leave your TV on, put it on medium volume. That way, if a person even gets any idea about thinking about coming into your room, they're going to put their ear to the door first, and they're going to listen a little bit, and they're going to say, okay, uh, is somebody in there? And they're going to think twice before they decide to uh, try and uh, come in the room on you. Um, let's see. Now, when you leave your room, here's a very important tip. When you leave, Y'all know they got the do the door knockers, the the uh, do not disturb signs that go on your door. Take that thing and leave just a corner of it wedged in between the door and the door seal. Just leave it wedged in there. And here's why. If somebody has gone in your room or attempted to go in your room, that door knocker is not going to be in the same position because most times people don't pay attention. It won't be in the same position when you leave. <laughs> Wanda Scales say real talk. She puts porn on. Okay. Well, okay. Well, hey, that's not a bad idea, Wanda. <laughs> uh, then they're going to be really like, hey, <laughs> um, put that door knocker in between the door and the door seal so that it's kind of locked in when you close the door. That way, if somebody comes and opens the door and it's not back where you left it, and I even encourage you to go even one step further and take a picture of the position that it's in when you leave. That way, when you come back, if you look at that thing and it's not right where you left it, eh, wait a minute then you might want to maybe consider talking to security because that way, if they need to go back, because all of these hotels have 
cameras down the hall. If they need to go back and find out who was tampering or fooling around at your door, they can go back and look through those cameras and they can find them. Get with security on that. Um, let's see. Hey, y'all know I got I had to, I had to make a lot of notes for this stuff, but you know I'm kind of I'm a I'm a I'm sort of a security nut, and there's a lot of things that I do that sometimes I take for granted. So I have to make sure that I uh, put all this stuff out there. And I'm sure that there are going to be things that I'm going to forget. But this is for the purpose of making sure that we are at least somewhat safe in our environment while we do what we do. Um, let's see. Yeah, we covered that. All right, ultraviolet, we covered that. Let's see, we covered that. Now, uh, hmm. and I'm going to say it again. I, I encourage y'all to um, check out some of these YouTube videos for all of these type of things that uh, that I'm talking about. Um, let's see. Bima says, in the past, I put my DI not, do not disturb on the outside of the door and return to find the cleaning team has had entered anyway. Yeah, well. I can tell you what, if they do it to me, it's going to be hell to pay. Now, we're going to get into some personal safety stuff here. That All of that information that I just gave y'all uh, can be applied anywhere, anytime, outside of the Steppers world. But I'm putting that out there because we as Steppers spend a lot of time in hotels if you're a traveling Stepper like I am. And so these things can be very important. Now, ladies and my men too, uh, we know that right now we have a lot of the general illnesses, the cold, the flu, the RSV, the COVID, everything that's happening right now. But I want you all who have chronic illnesses or things that are potentially uh, a problem for you, please, please, for not only your sake, but for the sake of the rest of us who are fellowshipping with you in this dance, take your medicine. Take your high blood pressure pills. Take your diabetes medicine, whatever it is that you need to be taking. Please take it. A few years ago, we went to Jamaica. There were approximately 60 people, 60 of us, mostly out of Chicago. And... We went to Jamaica, and man, I'm talking about we turned that spot out. Grand Bahia in Runaway Bay. We had a fantastic time. However, while we were there, a gentleman who was with us, we were in the pool playing volleyball, and he literally began to have a stroke right next to me. I grabbed him from going under the water. Me and another guy got him out of the pool. We got him on a stretcher. And that was when I found out just how critically important travel insurance is. Y'all, if the, and I'm saying this, this let's forget the stepping part. If you travel outside of this country, even if you're in this country, but if you travel outside of this country, do not ever go anywhere without your traveler's insurance. Have it in the country, but definitely have it outside the country. I had no, I never knew that your Insurance coverage in the States, they don't give a flying Superman about it. Not none. They wanted $7,000 coming through the door, cash money. Um, And I mean cash. Now, between the 60 of us, <laughs> that wasn't really a huge issue. However... This all could have probably been avoided. We found out later on that this gentleman had not been taking his high blood pressure medicine for some time, as a matter of fact. At least that's what we, that's what I heard. Let me just put it that way. Anyway, I said that to say he caused a lot of us grief. Um... You know, you feel bad. You out with, you know, you with someone and you feel bad because you don't want somebody to be sick, especially in a foreign country. But regardless, even at these sets, we're all together. 
We need to be number one. Y'all hear me say it on here all the time. Be mindful of the people around you. We don't know what everybody's situation is. Everybody is dealing with something different. Everybody has their own things going on. And just because your life may be perfect, everybody else's may not be. They want to have fun like everybody else. No, we don't owe them anything, but we could give a little common courtesy and be mindful that it's possible that somebody else might need our help. Just care enough to give them a kind word and maybe even a hug sometimes. Um, Smiling Happily says, and be careful with the drinks. Watch them pour from the bottle. Absolutely. Uh, and, and that applies, like, even here on the set, we have people who will walk away from their drinks and other things like that. We have to be mindful. These are all common sense things to apply to our lives in regard to uh, how we move about in the world, but not only that, but but more so in our community. Now, we're pretty good about taking care of one another in the Steppers community, but I even want to caution you about that, and we're going to get to that here in one second too. Um, Wanda Scale says, even though I know a lot of us do not want others to know our business, but especially diabetics on insulin, please allow someone to know that this is something you need because a lot of people will confuse low blood sugar with being drunk. Thank you, Wanda. Now, y'all, just so, just for those of you who don't know, you know, I always talk about all of the different talent and all of the different people within our community who are resourceful. Wanda Scales just happened to have been a very high-ranking fire official, and she is well-versed in uh, emergency medical care and things of that nature. So this is yet another situation where she's just explained something just for the sake of knowledge for the rest of us that many people would not know. Thank you, Wanda, for that. You are a fantastic contributor. Now, um, let me also give a shout-out to my man, Tony Adway. I got a phone call from him at 1.30 this morning. And y'all know I don't care when Tony called me because that's my guy. That's my main man, 50 Grand. He called me, y'all. Tony is in great spirits, and he is doing well, and I'm happy and thankful uh, of that. And I have... Uh, once again, put the cables on him and encouraged him to continue doing the things that he has been doing around the Steppers community, regardless of his current situation. Um, and he being, and I'm going to use him as an example right here. Why? Because, for example, last year when we were at Black and Bling, um, Tony hung with me most of the time. And because, not only because Tony is my friend and him and I go back many, many years, um, you know, Tony needed to move around. And because I am the type of person that I am, I made sure that he was able to move around. I was right there with him. We got him wherever he needed to go, and, it, and that's just that. We got to take care of each other, y'all. Just just period. I mean, that's just what it is. Um, let's see. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Now, and, and, and you know, as a matter of fact, another thing that happened where Tony was concerned, and I want to use this to illustrate some other things about why we got to take care of each other. Two years ago, the last step Ganza, my man, Keith Hubbard and Irie, we were at the casino venue where they were doing the comedy show. And Tony came in. Tony was a little late. And everybody around this community is fully aware that Tony at that time had uh, one leg and the other was a prosthetic. And he was using a cane to move around. Well, prior to him getting there, um, Keith and Irie both had taken the microphone and requested that some of the men in the, in the room get up and allow some of the ladies to sit down. There were many women in there in high heels. And we're going to get to this. this we, we're going here too. Who should have been allowed to have a seat. Now, I don't know what world we living in these days, but where I come from, we had courtesy for the ladies. When I was coming up, we got our asses up when a woman came in the room and gave up our seats. We did this on public transportation and otherwise. How you sitting there calling yourself a man while these women are standing up? Now, in Tony's case, I felt like who in this room should give some 
consideration to the fact that here's a man with one leg who we all watched struggle to walk across that floor to go sit on a speaker in front of the stage because that was the only place in the room for him to have to sit down. How rude are we? I didn't have a seat to give him. If I did, I would have. I wasn't even in a seat myself. Nobody in, that was with me had one. But I thought it was very ignorant for people to sit there and watch, able-bodied people, to sit there and watch a man have to walk across that floor to go find a seat and those women stand there in those high heels while they sit there pretending to be some type of pimp. Man, get up. But these ain't the old days. You know, there's a lot of, a lot of you new neo-steppers out here who think y'all are, y'all are competing with these women. Y'all got this thing where y'all think matching women's energy is a good thing. I don't know where that came from, but it's unfortunate. Um, now, let me tell y'all, and this is something that is very, very critical to me and to every one of y'all, and I want y'all to understand this and be very, very clear, very clear about what I'm about to say. Ladies, even my guys, but specifically because there are so many more women in our community that travel, spend their money, and come to these events. Listen to me. Let somebody know where you are. Let somebody know who you're with. Let somebody know when you're moving around. I had the... I, I ran into a situation recently where a young lady who is a stepper became ill in her room. Fortunately, there were people who were with her who recognized that they had not heard from her, who were uh, uh, in her group that checked on her, and they realized that she was incapacitated and were able to get to her, and she was then taken away by ambulance. She is doing fine. However, it made me think. What happens to all of my people who travel alone? I'm going to call somebody out. One of my guys on here, my man, Dallas Brown. Dallas travels a lot of places, and he travels by himself. And I know we like to be private. We like to, you know, keep to ourselves and be, you know, uh, we do our thing because automatically, you know, Dallas is a young guy. And, of course, Dallas, hey, I'm a young cat. Nothing going to happen to me. You know, we all think we're invincible at some point. But guess what? We don't know. None of us do. I don't care how old. I don't care how, how young. Please, people, let somebody know. Have somebody checking on you. Have somebody calling you. Ring your phone. Make sure you're all right. Because if something happens to you, and you're not able to reach your cell phone. You're not able to get out of bed. You are unconscious, whatever the case may be. And some of us are more susceptible to this, to this than others because we know our medical condition. No, the rest of the world may not know, but you know. And at the end of the day, help yourself by making sure that someone knows where you are so that they can make sure that you're okay. It ain't about people knowing where you are, keeping up with you, or doing what, whatever the case, you know, whatever it is. But we got we to gotta look out for each other. We have to. Um, you know, back in my motorcycle days, we used to do a lot of traveling and moving around. And, uh, but as bikers, we always kept up with each other and made sure, whether, whether the other guy liked it or not, we made sure our people was where they belonged and we made sure that everybody had what they needed uh, regardless. That's just the way it was. Um, I would like to see more of that in this community, but we also have to be very careful and I'm going to get to that in a minute too. Um, you got to know to check on your people. Now, uh, we got to be sure 
that as we, you know, all fellowship in this community, I want you to, and, and while I'm telling y'all this, I want you to be also mindful and very careful about the people that you do let know where you are and what's going on. My man, Josiah Burt, who just was on with us earlier talking about his event for the weekend, has made a statement on this show on more than one occasion. And that statement being, you don't know these people. And here's what he means. While some people around the steppers community, particularly newer steppers, they tend to put certain names, certain faces on pedestals because they dance well. Well, here's what I need for all of you to be very, very, very clear about. You still don't know these people. Y'all don't know me. You don't know my wife. You don't know the people that you want to like very badly. This is how people get caught up in bad relationships. You meet somebody and you want to like them real bad. So you overlook particular habits and things that they may or may not do that just don't fit your lifestyle or whatever the case may be. But you want to like them so you ignore the red flags. And I'm cautioning you to be careful of even that because, again, you don't know these people. What you know is that this person can dance and that commonality that you have with them does not necessarily make them a good person. Now, I got a phone call some time ago from a young lady who told us an unfortunate story about how she ended up in a car with someone uh, during a situation who volunteered to assist her and we talk about two people from the Steppers community, um, fairly well-known people, ended up in a vehicle being taken, I believe it was to the airport. Was the airport? I don't remember. Don't, don't, the, I'm not even going to get into the details, so, but I'm going to tell you what happened. In the process, this person, this male who was driving, began to masturbate with her in the car with him. Uh, she says that she literally jumped over the seat. She couldn't jump out of the car. She jumped over the seat. I don't remember the exact details as to how that ended. However, she was, she got out of the car and got wherever she was going. My point is this, again, people throughout this entire community have different proclivities, habits, behaviors, and different things along with they actually can dance. You don't know people. We want to like the people around us, but on the other hand, we have to be careful. We have to vet people and make sure that people are not nuts and have basic common sensibility. It's unfortunate that these things happen, but what makes this even worse is the fact that things like this go on in our community and they don't get put on blast. They don't get talked about. Now, it's not my place to expose who, when, where, how, and why because that was that person's situation. If I were asked to, I would. But the problem and the reason why some of these things continue to happen or happen around our communities because nobody says anything. It has to be spoken about in order for it to be corrected, curtailed, or anything else. Technically, she could have just called the police. That's an assault charge all day. But we have people around here who don't, who don't want to do that because they don't want to be uh, um, ostracized. They don't want to be made to seem like, oh, man, uh, I don't want to get in trouble. I don't want people to look at me sideways because everybody likes this person. Y'all know the routine. Women get abused and they don't want to say anything because they feel like the rest of the world is not going to listen. 
and that's not good. Um, I know of another individual fascinated by a person who ended up placing themselves in harm's way and didn't even realize it. Why? Because they are not from where we're from. They didn't understand the danger that they put themselves in just trying to hang, trying to kick it. That's dangerous. Listen, ladies and gentlemen, know your lane and stay in it. Understand what you're doing. Uh, now, I'm going to shift gears, y'all. Another part of the wellness and health of us, and I'm going to say it again. I know I'm going to forget a whole bunch of stuff before this is all over with because there's a lot I want to cover, but I'm going to cover what I can. And we'll deal with the rest another time if we need to. Ladies and gentlemen, this dance is a physical activity. Some of y'all don't work out. Some of y'all work out. Some of y'all run. Some of y'all, you know, do all sorts of different things. But I need you to understand that this dance is damn near like a sport now. It's very, very act is active activity. Um, uh, um, oriented your body is moving you are twisting you are contorting you are especially these days with the neo stepping see that's my new word that's my new name for what y'all are doing today because that's not because this stuff is gone away from stepping it's y'all doing something else i keep saying it need a new name so now my new name for this is neo stepping because stepping is something else um all this twisting and turning we ain't do all that um but because this is a physical activity and we're not getting any younger, lots of people have now new knees, new hips, coming away from these dances with injuries. Last year, we were at um, Stepping in Huntsville and I'm sitting there watching my man Drew do his thing and Drew hurt his knee. Drew injured his knee dancing. Drew Alexander. We he went out of there in a wheelchair. Now, if it can happen to you, it can happen to anybody. Wanda say new shoulders, yeah, Wanda, new shoulders. <laughs> if it can happen to him, it can happen to anybody. My point is, and this is where y'all need to be thinking about: Do you have health insurance? Do you have life insurance? The amount of monies that we spend going back and forth doing these events, you should have that. And if you don't, you need to figure it out because they got the healthcare market and other things that you can use if you're not working in a job where your insurance is available. There is insurance available for you. You need to get you some of that. Because what happens if you have one of these events and you mess around and twist a knee, twist an ankle, any of that shoulder go get pulled out of socket. And believe me, I've seen that possible too. And you have to go to the hospital. Uh-oh, now what? Um, <laughs> smiling happily saying, some of us are top-heavy, new tatas. There you go. <laughs> hey, them, that's, come on now. You going to hurt those? I don't think them going to get hurt. But anyway, <laughs> um, yeah, and somebody said, get gap insurance like Aflac. Thank you, Kenneth Wynn. Absolutely. Um, but what's important is, you know, you need to know your limits. Now, I'm saying that to say, especially to my guys, Sometimes some of the men in the community get a little carried away and they get a little, you know, uh, overzealous and they get to putting women in 15,000 turns and uh, as Reggie Miles will say, uh, 9,875 turns, combinations and all sorts of pretzely moves. Well, what happens if your body can't take those moves? You think it can't happen? I've seen it. And the next thing you know, you got to Ligament out of pocket, you you know you don't pull the muscle. Uh, for those of you who you know know what it is, you better keep you some of that Ben Gay on deck, some of them 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 uh, icy hot rubs. So when you get back to your room, you can rub them muscles down or whatever the case may be. But guys, be careful. Every lady that you dance with is not prepared for all of that. So sometimes you need to tone it down a little bit. Ladies, know your limit. 
don't feel as though if you don't do certain moves or you don't perform a certain way that these guys are going to be like, oh, I don't, I don't want to dance with her no more. Or You're going to miss something. Don't do that. Everybody can't handle the same thing. <laughs> Somebody said K-Tape, uh, CBD oil. There you go. <laughs> Mike W. What did you say? Uh, Ike Turner's. I like that. That's a good one. They all, they call them Ike Turner's. They're them Ike Turner dudes. They be turning you all over the place. Um, don't worry about being criticized, ladies, if you don't take a turn. I was showing some new steppers just this weekend about if they decide that they don't want to take all of those turns, how to work around that. And yes, ladies, you can work around that. Yes, Sandy Bernard or dipping is in unnecessary way. Absolutely. That was going to get to that, too. I know a dancer who used to like to dip women, and there were certain women that didn't want to be dipped, and I actually watched, uh, I almost watched a fist fight <laughs> take place over a dip before. So there, there we are again. Um, ladies and gentlemen, be mindful of the shoes that you have on when you come to a step -a set. Do you have on a shoe that's comfortable? Is it going to cause you blisters? Think about, in a lot of these venues, depending on who's giving it, there may not be a wood floor. There may be concrete. There may be marble. There may be all different sorts of tile. Have on shoes that are not going to beat your body up. This is all part of your health and wellness. Have on shoes that are not going to wear your knees out, that are not going to have you run around talking about how sore your knees are. There are 10,000 things that can go wrong in this dance in regard to your health. Yes, Ken and Wynn said carpet. Absolutely. You got that, you know, that, that uh, uh, I forgot what they call it, the type of carpet they call it. But you got all of that. Um, and Regina Freeman said, just don't come to the party smelling like Ben Gay. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> uh, you, you have to even think about sometimes the clothes that you wear. Are they comfortable? Are they binding? Uh, are we wearing something that is dangling? When you got these people that like to do 10, 9,875 turns, is it going to get caught? Is it going to get stuck? Is the top you got on laced? Is his watch going to get hung up in it? You got to think about all of these things. Um, ladies, high hair. Uh, if you've got certain types of hairstyles, if you've got long braids that are whipping around and different things. I had a young lady on my show year before last uh, doing an interview. And her hair got caught in my watch. And she panicked and almost pulled her hair off, I guess. Because she was freaking out. And I was like, hold on. Let me move. My, you know, I wasn't getting ready to pull it or nothing because I was mindful of what was happening. But these things happen. And God forbid somebody has a problem, you know, where something comes undone because of these sorts of things. And Regina Freeman said, don't forget to mention the pointed nails. Absolutely. Some of these ladies got these daggers on the ends of their fingers these days. Mess around and get your jugular slit. <laughs> got to be more careful. <laughs> but we got to take extra care when we uh, are doing these things. And sometimes we get carried away and we don't think about it. And, you know, doo-doo happens. Now, I, I propose that moving forward so to my instructors and to my promoters, I think that we should, you should, consider in the future people who are of the medical background, nurses, nurse practitioners, doctors, people who are emergency first responders and things like that. I think these people should be given special consideration in regard to lessons, uh, attendance, when they come to the events, that sort of thing. It is wonderful to have people like this present at your events. I think that is a fantastic idea. I think that we should encourage more of the medical professionals to come into this dance, male and female, and give special considerations to these people because we ain't getting no younger. And Lord knows there's nothing better than having somebody who understands what's going on in our presence in the case of an emergency. And we have had that happen in the past. We have had people who had medical emergencies at sets. And there was mad thankfulness that we had people who were familiar on the set 
that were able to assist, that were able to maybe preserve a life, maybe to give proper medical care until emergency people arrive. I think that is a something that needs to happen. We need to give our medical professionals more consideration. And we have quite a few within the Steppers community. Um, Kenneth Wynn says, offer free passes to medical professionals. Absolutely. I think that's a great idea. And then that's just me, y'all. Um, I think that's going to conclude. And I know I'm, I'm telling y'all, I know I missed a whole bunch of stuff. I know I did. But we've already gone an hour and 20 minutes. So if we need to come back and do a, we need to bend back on this topic, we will. But I wanted to give you food for thought more than anything else. That was my goal for this evening, to make put some things on your mind and make it so that you just take a little more time and a little more care. Everything that I said is not going to apply to everybody, but there's something in there that is sure to either help you now or sometime in the future, you're going to say to yourself, you know what? I remember on Inside Stepping, Brian Forbes said this, this, or this. Yeah. Wanda Scales, I love that. There's another thing. Wanda says each promoter should create an emergency bag just for sets. That can include bandages all the way to an AED. Man, that is what I'm talking about right there. See, that's why I love this show. Got so many smart people, man, around here. Yeah. Yep, yep. And Regina says she was thinking about getting a portable defibrillator just in case somebody needs it. Absolutely. And here's the thing. I don't know about other states, but in Texas, we don't have that stupid law that if you try to help somebody, they can sue you. This is what we call a good Samaritan state. In fact, if you leave somebody dying and you don't try to help, they can actually charge you for that here. That's just, I'm just saying, <laughs> you know, but I don't know about other places, but here you, you, you have an obligation to assist a person in distress and in need. Um, but I think that th throughout this entire steppers community, we would serve ourselves much, much better by not only fellowshipping in the dance, but being able to fellowship with one another on other levels that are going to help us in our life journey and in our dance journey, of course. Um, I can't stress that enough, and I will constantly tell everyone, just love on your fellow steppers as much as you can. For those of you who have your strange behaviors and your proclivities, just try and have a little bit of discipline and, you know, treat each other nicely with respect and let's just love on each other, man, and keep this keep this thing rolling till the wheels fall off. You know, I think it would be a beautiful, beautiful thing. Um, Norma, Nel Norma Nelson says instructors should be able to show students how to adjust their dance to their physical limitations like bad knee, back, etc. Norma, I agree with you. Um, the only problem is that we have – a lot of people in this community who refer to themselves as instructors uh, that just simply are not qualified. And because I have no heaven or hell to put anybody in and there is no set standard in regard to what people learn and who they learn it from, we will always forever struggle with people getting misinformation and not getting what they need uh, in regard to the dance and then the things that go with the dance, like what you are saying currently, people have to, there are people teaching this dance who genuinely do not even understand the structure of the dance, why things are the way they are, or even, um, you know, just what it is in general, where it came from. No, they, they can't, they can't teach any of that. And so to ask people to be able to, understand it well enough to teach to the physical limitations, that's a stretch. I could probably count on eh, maybe two hands the people who would even consider that, who would even think about that. You know, the rest of them, they just going to be like, you know, watch me do this. And, and then they call themselves instructors. So y'all know what it is. All right. So ladies and gentlemen, uh, I want to thank each and every one of you for coming through and hanging out with your man on the inside stepping. Um, I love what I do. I do it for you. 
It's all about y'all. This show is not about me. It never has been. It never will be. Um, as long as you all continue to approach me at these sets and in different places in public and you tell me that you learned something on Inside Stepping and that you love the show because it's been able to help you in your journey and has made your stepping journey that much better, then the show will go on. The show must go on. Um, like I said, again, it's 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 my penance. It is what it is. I'm going to do my part. So with that, uh, Regina Freeman talking about part two. Yeah, Regina, we'll talk about part two. We'll see. We'll see. Because I'm sure some other, y'all know something always come up in the steppers world. That's just the way it is. It's always going to be something. But I just want y'all to be careful. I want y'all to take care of yourselves and take care of each other. But if you don't take care of you, you can't take care of nobody else. You got to take care of you first. Just like when you get on the plane, when you're ready to fly to the set. First thing the steward is say, put your mask on first before you try to help somebody else. Same thing in this game right here. Put your mask on first and then help somebody else. That way you can stay healthy while you help to get them where they need to be. Ladies and gentlemen, I love y'all. I'm going to leave you with my typical quote because I, I want this to sink in. I want y'all to remember this thing. Never measure an event by the quantity of the people in attendance, but by the quality of the memories you create with the people who are present. I want y'all to always remember that. Don't forget to hit those like and subscribe buttons. Don't forget to share the live. Don't forget that Brian Forbes loves y'all and he wants to wish you all a happy new year. That's the first time I ever talked to him. I talked about myself in third person. That was kind of neat. <laughs> so, so with all of that said, uh, everybody have yourselves a wonderful, wonderful evening. Happy new year. And I love you. We're going to see you on next Tuesday, y'all. Love, peace, chicken grease, because I'm out.